Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lanolin, and we are back with episode four of Feed the Beast Unstable. In this episode, we are going to focus on creating ourselves a hammer. And uh, we actually kind of got to do this kind of quick because uh, in this current iteration of Unstable, which uh, I believe is still 3.0.9 that I am on, um, Tinker still exists. But in an upcoming update, Tinker's is actually going to be removed. Now, I personally haven't really run into too many bugs, um, or at least anything significant with Tinker's. But apparently a lot of other people have, and this is kind of overwhelming, overwhelming the uh, developer. So they've kindly asked that for now, uh, FTB just kind of pulls it out of the packs, gives them a little bit of uh, time to squash some of the more serious bugs, so they can push out a more stable release, and people can uh, relax and stop itching. <laughs> so anyway, I want to go ahead and make a hammer. I already have all the materials and stuff in here, or else I would just wait and like not bother. But I figured, why not? I went ahead and took the time to get this stuff going, so let's do it. Um, obviously, I already went, went ahead and made the casting, uh, the cast heads and all that stuff for the hammerhead and the large plate. Because as I mentioned in the previous episode, the, hammer, the recipe itself is still the same, and the uh, material cost is still the same. Though, I will notice, actually, that the casts seem to actually say now the correct material cost. Like yesterday when I recorded, they didn't. But no updates were had. But now somehow they say the correct, like they say it in uh, buckets rather than ingots. I don't particularly care for this change because I have no idea how much a freaking four buckets and three millibuckets of molten obsidian. I don't know how much obsidian that is, dude. <laughs> I just know how much I like. I just know how much the hammer needs from my experience with old school tinkers. So, not a fan of that change. I'll admit that one right off the bat. Not a fan of that change at all. But it's okay. Not my mod is still a work in progress. So we'll see what changes as the uh, time goes on. In the meantime, I can still very much so appreciate this amazing cooling down effect that was added. There it goes. Look at that. Slowly cools down, gets darker over time, starts to take shape, starts to mold up, and then... Boom. Yeah. You got yourself a hammerhead. So I went ahead and used the iron hammerhead because it has that magnetic... Um, attribute which is actually really nice i didn't really talk about it too much in the previous episode but it kind of gives you a little bit of a magnetization on blocks that are about two or one to two blocks away so with it in our hand if we move just a little bit forward you'll kind of see it suck up although it, actually maybe it doesn't work with dirt yeah there we go i mean you can kind of see it kind of slowly move forward it's not super obvious. You kind of you kind of have to be using it to really see the difference. Uh, but anyway, let's get these hammerheads going. There we go. And for these, I wanted to use obsidian, which I should actually mention. Um, I had to. If, you see, I have two picks. <laughs> I have the one that I made initially on camera with you guys, and then the, I have the one that I had to uh, make again because um, the ability to upgrade your like once you get to iron level, like once you get to the point where you have an iron pick that can mine diamond. The next thing that you need to do is uh, either create a pick that has an extra modifier or just uh, a pick that's specifically for mining obsidian because um, the diamond upgrade to allow it to mine obsidian um, requires a modifier. So that's one modifier that's out the door um, because of that diamond upgrade. However, it can now mine obsidian as and it has a much, much higher durability than our, our guy over here, like twice as much just about. So just keep that in mind. For some people, it might be better. They might like it this way. They might not care too much about the looting aspect just because this is modded and sometimes getting resources aren't nearly as difficult as they would be in vanilla. So it's up to you. Again, as I mentioned in the previous episode, Tinkers is moving kind of towards a, a tool for every job or the, I should say the right tool for every job. And as time goes on, I'm sure people will discover and find combinations that work better than others. But for now, it's all fun and games, man. We can all have a good time and play around and Try new things. Hello? Do you not... Do you just take a long time to... There we go. Okay, so it just takes a hot minute to cool down. Makes sense. It's quite a lot, of, a lot of ingots in there. Nice. We have our two large plates, hammer, uh, hammerhead. And uh, what else we got? Whoops. So two large plates, hammerhead. Oh, yeah, that's right. The... Uh, 
the tool rod. Damn, I actually I meant to make that off camera because I think I need I actually think I need two slime things for that. I want to stick with the slime because I like the slime. It uh, gives a chance that you'll drop a slime. Uh, I think it's one in every 300 uses. Or maybe once every 300 seconds. Or, or maybe it's a one in 300 chance every time you use it that it will spawn a slime when you break said block. Which can be really cool, unless you already have a bunch of slimes, in which case it's whatever. Um, the other reason I like to use it is because it gives a lot more durability than a lot of the other tool rods. Um, especially compared to the amount of work that you have to go through to get those types of tool rods. Like, even the pig iron tough tool rod is, like, way lower durability than the slimy one. Um, I was gonna go for the king slime stuff. King slime's pretty good and is a, is a good alternative if you don't want to um, use up that modifier for the diamond. Um, however, you need to find yourself um, some purple slime, which can be a little bit weird. Uh, if you don't have any of these uh, purple slime saplings. So, just keep that in mind. If you get these uh, purple slime saplings, go ahead and hold on to them. I decided to just go, eh, screw it, and uh, go for the standard the standard method of uh, getting obsidian, which is just throwing on a diamond upgrade. Um, so anyway, I could have been working on <laughs> the slime stuff the whole time, but it only takes a second. Um, and the last thing is sand. There we go. That should give us our three slime crystals. Um, pretty sure I'm only going to need the one, but I figured I'd toss two in there. Oh yeah, I'll, I moved both my speed upgrades over here. I haven't bothered to make any more speed upgrades or anything, because I've kind of been eating through all my redstone, upgrading my picks. Not really sure why I went ahead and upgraded this pick to haste, as I like pretty much only used it to mine obsidian, but eh, whatever. Whatever, I'll have it in the event that I like lose a pick or something. Although, actually, I guess if we're pulling Tinker's Construct, it's not going to matter at all. Wah, wah. Oh, well. I'll live. So, there we go. Yeah. Material costs three, and I'm pretty sure that's going to eat all three. Yeah. All right. No worries, though. Does it actually give me any info? It'll wash off. Yeah, okay. So, that's what it means by it'll wash off. Occasionally, you will spawn a slime. So, <laughs> that tip uh, a little bit more vague than others. Oh yeah, that's right. Hammerlin. See, that that's really the only bug that I've kind of run into. Just the, wow, this hammer only has 501 durability. That's really bad. Ooh, Doritos. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, Obsidian gives us the uh, Doritos effect, which, if I remember correctly, Doritos has a random chance of either using uh, double durability or very, very low durability. Almost no durability. Um, the Doritos uh, buff is basically like reinforced three. Like the the averages, like the behind the scene averages, average out to be about a seventy percent increase in durability. So even though this says five hundred one, this uh, Doritos, yeah, your tool lasts longer most of the time. So there's a chance that it'll use extra durability, but there's a much higher chance that it won't, and it won't use any durability. So hell yeah. So we can kind of sit comfy on that 501. Um, we could, of course, toss a diamond on it and make it a little bit stronger. Um, I decided not to use the wooden, like put any type of wood anything on there, just because, eh, the Doritos effect is going to make it so I don't have to worry about it healing itself up. And the only thing is, uh, what do I repair it with? I'm not actually sure. Probably iron, since I made the head iron. So let's try this bad, bad boy out. I'm actually really curious about some of the uh, other upgrades you can do with the hammer. But I want to try it out just uh, on, all on its own first. Doo, doo, doo. And uh, I don't think I'll run all the way down to the bottom. I'll just do it like right here. Oh, that's cool. You can actually see, you can see the area in which it's going to dig. All right. In that case, I am going to run down here. Maybe I'll. What is this? Y level twenty four. All right. I'll pop out right here. Hell yeah, man! Oh, love having a hammer. Love having a hammer. <laughs> so good. It makes mining just the greatest. So how's our durability looking? 466. Let's pop this. Now how are we doing? 451. So looking through that, I definitely got a little bit unlucky. 
I would say. So let's run upstairs and see if we can find any like cool upgrades we can do with this. Because from what I've heard and seen and read, you can actually expand the range of the hammer wider than its uh, standard 3x3. I'm not sure how to do that, but I really want to find out. So let's run over here to our tool forge and screw around a little bit, see if we can't find a few hints and tips. Because none of the books, none of the books that are in Tinker's Construct normally are in right now. And even if they were, most of the things, if not all of the things in all of those books are completely wrong. Or rather, depreciated. Slash irrelevant. So let me actually go ahead and sleep, look a few through my notes, and then I will return. Alright, so I'm back, and uh, a creeper was nice enough to interrupt my progress and blew me to smithereens. And also blew all my stuff to smithereens, so I have to make... And you, and he blew up the glass too. Oh my goodness. It was weird. He blew up this stuff and like the creeper turned it back into granite. Like wet. Wet. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell happened with like it literally blew these blocks up, turned them back into granite, and then dropped them on the ground. So I don't know what's going on in one eight nine, but it's some crazy shit to be <laughs> to be uh honest. I, I'm all kinds of confused. Okay, so we're kind of looking back to normal. Um, actually, let me move that. I need to make a, another... That's why I came back out here. I need to grab a stencil. Um, need another chest. Which reminds me, he blew up that chest too. So I actually need another chest. Because huh, I, I noticed that there are some downsides to this new and improved, if you, I guess, improved pattern chest. Uh, you can't put casts in there. Wait, what? I swear, yesterday, I could not put casts into the pattern chest. <laughs> oh, I see. You can only have one of each. Okay, so that's the difference. That is the difference. You used to be able to put both in one, but I guess now... Okay, so let's actually try something. I'm curious. Hello? There we go. Oh, also, I seem to have gotten another magic hood. I don't know if that was a dupe when the creeper killed me or if the creeper dropped a magic hood, but I have another one. <laughs> and it also doesn't seem to take durability, which is kind of cool. It is magic after all, so can't complain. All right, so real quick before we get to making a, what I want to do next, because I actually I couldn't figure out what exactly increased the range of the hammer. Couldn't figure it out. Couldn't really find any documentation about it, like any any definite, like this is how you do it type things. Um, it might, I, I kind of looked through all the different traits. I didn't mean to make another. Whenever I have two chests. <laughs> Can always use more chests, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, um, I couldn't find anything definite on how to exactly make the, uh, give the hammer that, that large radius that you can do. But I, I've seen the radius uh, of the hammer increase uh, by quite a bit. It's pretty nice, actually. I was pretty impressed. Um, so I want to see if this will work. If I could put both those pattern chests here, access something, and then have access to both pattern chests. Nope. I didn't think that would work, but I figured it was worth a shot. So I'll just toss this pattern chest over here. That's fine. That's cool. All good. So how are we doing on gold? Oh, man. I'm out of gold. Wait. Did that say free? Oh, okay. There we go. Nice. So let me actually grab a little bit of gold, get it smelting, because I want to make a sword. Because right now I'm just using a regular sword. So I figured the rest of the episode we can go ahead and uh, take a little bit of time to make something neat. So while, while I'm blabbing, I'll toss that gold in there and let it start melting down. So what do we want to do for our sword? Well, there's actually only the two. There's only two swords now in Tinker's Construct, the broad sword and the long sword. The long sword seems to have taken, or at least has the image of the, uh, the old rape here. Um, and then everything else is gone. Like, there's no... I mean, you still have your cleaver, but everything else is pretty much the same. No no bows or anything yet, unfortunately, but that's okay. No crossbow to one-shot the Ender Dragon. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the old school, the old workhorse, the broadsword. It's always fun and always nice. So uh, to get started with that, we should probably pop over to our part builder. I um, actually don't want the tough tool rod. Oh, yeah. I always, I always forget I can just access everything from one... <laughs> so let's put that back. Actually, let's take a look at some new functionality as well. 
This was actually something that I always complained wasn't a thing. You can now overwrite old patterns. Hell yeah, dude. So good. That, that was just like a little little gripe that I had. That uh, if you just happen to accidentally make a pattern that you already had, you're just kind of stuck with that pattern. Like, okay, well, oh well, or that stencil. So now you can change them out, interchange them, use the same patterns over and over again. You know, all that fun stuff that you can do. So let's pop over to our part builder, wide guard. And I, of course, want to make this thing out of cactus, man. Prickly. Prickly does exactly what it used to do. A little bit of damage, armor piercing damage to anyone you attack. Damn good. I love it. Um, and then I think I wanted to stick with... Um, did I want to do slimy again? Or do I want to do wood? Hmm. Oh, actually, if I do wood, I can grab... You know, if I don't like it, you can interchange stuff now, so it's all good. So if I end up not liking it, I can just change it out. But I already have a wooden tool rod, so no reason to waste these valuable sticks. <laughs> Alright, so let's grab this guy. Oh, no, we don't need to. Alright, so we already have that. Um, we have our pattern wide guard. Let's toss you guys in there. I need... Oh, yeah, the sword blade. The most important bit. Sword blade. Oh, yeah. Same as with everything else. Got to toss it in here to make that cast. I hear you, spider. <laughs> Out there poking around. Let's light this stuff up, actually. Cool. So, oop. sword blade ready to go. Um, and... Uh, I think Manilian, or Manelian, or I don't know. There's so many different ways to pronounce this thing. I know there's a correct way. I don't care. I'm going to say it how I've always said it. I know Manilian is uh, probably the best still for for damage. Uh, where are you at? For like max damage, Manilian. Um, it's still pretty good for damage. Attack 8.72. But actually, iron is still pretty good. It says 6. But I believe that's either the second highest or one of the highest. Yeah, I believe that's the second highest. And uh, some behind-the-scenes stuff that's going on. I believe the iron sword blade, it's like behind-the-scenes modifiers are a little bit stronger for weapons. Um, don't quote me on that. Those are just kind of things that I've read that other people have noticed when they've made uh, different swords of different types. So just something to keep in mind. It does, however, have the highest base damage of everything else besides Manilian. So, hell yeah. Let's do it. We can pour this puppy out and actually see these numbers for reals. Man, that's so good, dude. That is so fancy. <laughs> Alright, let's get this going. Tool forge. Sword. Bam. Lanocutioner. Oh, man. Cutioner. I don't want to type it too fast or things get derpy. Is that what the executioner is? The Lanocutioner. Probably spelled wrong, but I don't care. Look at that. 10 damage out of the gate. What? <laughs> Holy cow. 10, ga 10 damage right out of the freaking box, man. That is pretty intense. So you're, you're smacking somebody for five hearts. Five hearts with a fresh, brand new sword. Like, here we go. We can test it on this guy. Full gold armored zombie. Bam. Two shot. Easy. <laughs> And that prickly is, remember, that prickly is armor piercing, so that gold doesn't mean, that gold armor doesn't mean jack crap. Oh my god. Two shot with the damage from the prickly coming in to finish him off. That's, that is like really strong. <laughs> it's really good, but I should mention, um, a few people have been screwing around with some of the like Thomcraft mobs, like the Thomcraft uh, Wither Skeletons, for example. And even even with this uh, this guy's super beefed up Manelian sword, he was still saying they they required like serious amounts of damage to really fell. But it works great for this your standard enemy. And as you can see, like the the prickly does give it a, a little bit of there is a little bit of RNG involved when it comes to the uh, the prickly aspect. But for the most part, man, we're, we're putting that damage down pretty consistently. Hell yeah, dude. So, I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the episode. Unfortunately, like I said, I don't think Tinker's Construct is going to be in the pack for too much longer. 
too many little bugs, too many people complaining about things that they think are bugs because they don't understand that things have changed or you know whatever is going on. Regardless, it's gonna take, it's gonna go away for a little bit, but that is okay because that means we can explore some of the other cool stuff that was added to Unstable. I was thinking about actually tossing or jumping into some blood magic because uh, it's early game stuff with pretty functionality and there's been some new changes made to blood magic that I would like to check out. Um, pneumatic craft was also um, recently or will be recently updated um, to the point where there's actually like quite a bit to do with it so I might be jumping into that too. Um, the only thing I think I'm going to probably avoid for now is uh, Thomcraft and Batania. As much as I would absolutely love to just jump into Thomcraft right now, um, Thomcraft taint is out of control. Like, absolutely out of control. So, a fair warning to anybody who's screwing around with Unstable that uh, is maybe following along or just maybe hasn't started Thomcraft yet. Wait. Just wait. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll let you know when you're good to go. Um, just right now, taint in Thomcraft 5 is, uh, it's not configurable, and when you do things in Thomcraft uh, that cause taint to be released into the aura, or atmosphere if you will, um, taint can kind of grow uncontrollably to the point where you might lose your map, because there's actually taint everywhere. So, <laughs> kind of holding off on Thomcraft for now, even though a lot of cool changes have been made. So, look forward to maybe some blood magic, maybe some pneumatic craft, and I'm sure we'll be screwing around with uh, some build craft and progressive automation in the meantime. Actually, maybe I'll jump into progressive automation pretty quick, because I, I wouldn't mind automating the farms a little bit, if that's a thing. And it looks like I know. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it looks like I can do that. So maybe we'll hop into that next episode. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.